Welcome to Brand Your Dream Show, the third season. And today we have amazing guests and we are going to talk about customer experience and how that impact your business, your communication with your clients, how that impact your brand. And in fact, how you can save a lot of money on marketing and get more customers by paying attention to your existing customers. Our guest today, Anastasia Vladichinska, she is customer experience consultant and she's known all around the world and she's going to tell us everything about her expertise and hopefully it will help you to build a very successful brand. Hi Anastasia, how are you doing? I'm good, hi Eve. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your expertise because I know that you teach in business school. I know that you present it in like Forbes in different places. So tell us more about your expertise so people know a little bit more about you. Yeah. Um, so basically what I do, I help companies exactly was what you just said. How do you pay more attention and how do you, um, when you say pay more attention, what do you actually do so that clients stay with you and refer you organically? That's basically, um, you know, the, the first level. The second level is uh, I love working with brands that want to disrupt their industries. And uh, and customer experience does help you to disrupt your industry. So these are mostly two levels. And yeah, um, I've been honored to work with amazing brands like um, Kenzo, Hugo Boss, uh, Premium Banking, Ben Pepper Bar, and even McDonald's. And yes, I've been on the US TV and in Forbes. Um, I think um, yes, uh, in terms of visibility, that must be that might be important, right? Because we are talking about visibility here. Mm-hmm. So being on outlets like Forbes and Good Morning Arizona, Good Morning Washington, these are big things. I do get this. And um, they certainly help. At the same time, um, yeah, we'll talk about it a bit later. But at the same time, to me, that's not something I like to show off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's usually about the results of the companies, what they get. Companies and entrepreneurs, by the way. Because, you know, for some, for some reason, we always think that customers meaning, oh, somebody else's clients, right? Mm -hmm. But customers mean meaning everybody's clients. So your clients as well and entrepreneurs clients as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, let's speak about visibility. And that's an interesting question, how I want to wrap it for your specific industry, because many people mistake invisibility only as grabbing attention of the new customers. And visibility is all about how we showing up as a business, as a brand, and the way we show up for our existing customers is exactly your area of expertise. So I want to turn this question a little bit uh, along with my light, (laughs) which is amazing. Uh, My light is uh, sometimes doing that. So how you can turn your existent client's attention with the right visibility because you they already know you they already experienced you they already probably purchased something from you and what we oftentimes experience as customers is that people show up for all new clients in all the possible ways and they are shiny and beautiful and in a moment you purchase something from them they almost forgot about you so what is your recommendation experience and understanding about how companies need to be visible for their existent customers oh, i love this example um, yeah, I love this because that's also a, a paradigm shift. We've been taught that to be visible for your existing clients means hammering them with your marketing messages, emails, text messages, and bonuses and um, sales. Right? Um, mm-hmm. That's that's another method that we've, we've been taught. I say I say that uh, marketing is everything before marriage. And service is everything after. So if you think about it this way, visibility (laughs) and all the shiny and beautiful stuff that has to be there. I mean, I completely agree with you. And, you know, I feel bad for those amazing companies that they are amazing, but they do not have visibility, right? Mm. That's what I love what you're doing. You help those companies and people, cool people, to start being visible. I mean, I love that. 
Now, the problem is when you become super visible, you're super shiny. And, and to me, in my own experience, the more visible I become, the higher level of responsibility I put on myself yeah. with my existing clients. So it's almost sometimes you're afraid to be so visible because then you bring up the expectations from you, right? Mm -hmm. And to answer your question, how to still be visible for your existing clients, definitely not with um, sales and, and marketing messages only, right? Ask yourself this question, which is super easy, by the way. It's not hard, but ask yourself a question of how can we take care of our clients after they bought from us? That's mm -hmm. that's not a hard question. But when you ask your team those questions, you I'm sure you will have, you know, 300 ideas of what you can do. Can you call them? Can you write them in a month and ask them, so how is it going, right? Are you applying the things that we've taught you and blah, 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 or uh, whatever, right? But, but, but from care standpoint, that's where businesses miss out. Mm -hmm. They think, okay, so... Working with our existing clients means to sell more to them, which I agree, which I agree. I mean, the result should be more sales to the existing clients. That's why that that's exactly why you don't spend money on so much money on getting new ones, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you will sell better when your clients feel like you care. See the difference? You will sell less when the clients feel like you're only contacting them to sell. So, um, yeah, so uh, and it could be a whole strategy. It could be a whole strategy of how do you uh, create and then support and sustain relationships with your existing clients after they bought from you or even before. There are some stages where still we could improve in the before the sales stage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that the definition of the brand, which I use like for many, many years, let's say, more than 15 for sure, maybe around 20, is a brand is an image in customers' mind, which customers create on their own based on the other customers' testimonials, their own experience with your company and the information which you share online and offline. So basically it merges this idea which you just described, like because it's service, it's care, and it's information, so visibility of information, so to say. When we build the brand, I know, especially for coaches, because I personally work with coaches, course creators, smaller businesses, founders of some software companies and stuff like that. These people have a very strange tendency. And now we're going to wrap it into authenticity because this is a disturbing practice, which is which I see everywhere. And I think it's it's something which we need to stop, you and me. That will be our goal. <laughs> You know, so this disturbing practice is people ask to buy or they get some kind of connection with you. Like, let's say they've been on show with you. Let's say they get your email. So the first transaction happened with lead magnet or something. So, so to say free transaction or low level transaction. And then they start sending you the emails or sometimes messages, which are kind of so not personalized, they are random, they most of the time offers, they most of the time sound like, Eve, I really don't want you to miss this amazing opportunity, link is here. This is not communication, it is ultra not authentic. And I feel that I sold off all the time, I lose personal connection with this person, and I can't ban this person because we have this personal communication initially. So we had a human to human interaction. So I feel obliged to not stop this conversation. But now I have to receive all this spammy as I see messages in my messenger or in my email. And when these people, I would say, dare to ask me, did you read our emails? I'm like, no. I don't read your emails, they're full of spam. And there's zero authenticity, zero value. And if you will share with me another tip, which I can hear everywhere from everyone, it will not impact my business. It won't help me to grow. It doesn't position your brand is, as any of value for me. And in fact, I would love to unsubscribe. So 
it's offensive for them, they're not happy with that, but they still continue these practices. So speaking about authenticity, you started with this care message. How do you think the ideal authentic communication look like for these existent customers? That's actually a tough question because it's not like, let's say you have 10,000 emails in your in your list. You cannot personalize all the 10,000. I mean, except for the name, but now name is not even a personification anymore in emails. We can't expect that it's going to be in the, the your name will be there because the machine does it, not the person, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a very tricky question because you cannot, realistically, you cannot personalize all those 10,000. Um, can you write an email which is valuable to the 10,000, probably not, even if it's super valuable. And even if you cannot find it on YouTube and anywhere else, something, you know, you, you've had a client of yours, which was extremely excellent, extraordinary, and the client has completely changed your way of thinking for, you know, you've been thinking this for 15 years and now you think differently and you want to share it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you, I love, I personally try to send out emails which sound more as if I was writing to Eve. Mm -hmm. I actually sit down and I write an email as if I was writing it to, it to Eve. Like, Eve, you know what? Just wanted to share this with you because this has changed my thinking. Mm -hmm. But to tell you that all the 10,000 have opened that email will be, will be wrong, would not be true, right? Mm -hmm. At the same time, you also have to send them uh, offers or your programs. Like you want your audience to know about your programs, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and some people could have missed those beautiful emails that we wrote before without any offers. And they could have just stumbled into the offer that could just say, oh my goodness, you know, you haven't been talking to me forever and now, now, it's, now it's an offer, you know, unsub unsubscribe. So uh, in, I, I don't think that we always, always really can keep those, especially in the emails, okay? Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, this does not mean that they unsubscribed and they don't like you anymore. But what I make, I would have three unsubscribed people in eight months, for example, right out of all the database. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I don't like calling it database. It's just the uh, people. <laughs> and uh, so I usually make sure to write back to them and to apologize and to say, I personally am very sorry that I somehow didn't meet your expectations with that email. Could you please tell me what was, was it too much? Was it? completely off like what was it and some people would be very nice in telling this and some people it would just be their bad day or they I don't know they started hating you for some reason and they would just say no I just want to unsubscribe which is also fine but I do make sure this is not just an unsub unsubscribe button okay mm -hmm. now at the same time uh, I do have a system and I make sure that every week I get in touch with randomly with some of the clients that's been there for since since the start of the company when I started the company in 2013, mm -hmm. um, randomly. So I just open where my clients are, all the all the folders, and and I you know I just write them Messenger, uh, Facebook, uh, whatever where, where you, you talk to them, and usual stuff stuff like how are you doing? We haven't talked forever, or um, you know you look at their page they they had a baby born. I'm so sorry I missed I missed it. I miss you. You you had a baby. I, I feel so bad for not congratulating it on that baby. Mm -hmm. But please, in that moment, <laughs> do not sell anything. Exactly. Even the next moment when they answer, do not sell anything. Mm -hmm. Just close that conversation. <gasps> Anastasia, what do you mean close conversation? But we didn't close the lead. Forget about that lead right now. Or we didn't do the ABC. I mean, the ABC was a what? You know, always be closing. Which year was it? Like last century, previous uh -huh. century. Forget mm -hmm. about this. So, you know, you 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 close that conversation. People people know who you are. They mm -hmm. remember. Well, I, if you have changed your career, now you're, you're, you know, you stepped from corporate to being a coach. That's different, of course. Mm -hmm. But they know that, you, that Anastasia is a client service um, expert. So I don't need to remind them. Usually what happens when you write those and you just you genuinely want to know what's going on in the person's life. And sometimes they get back to you and they say, oh, Anastasia, and I saw that you're just 
doing um, service retreat in Milan and I wanted to send my daughter or whoever or my, my colleague to that is it still available yeah mm -hmm. so um, yes please guys forget about those messages um, on LinkedIn and I know that there are beautiful experts coaches that sell you you are going to have six seven whatever you fancy figure business yeah. once you buy my tool that sends out those uh, messages there is a whole business around that right mm -hmm. to not buy into it guys because even if you sell for the first time even if that happens mm -hmm. ask yourself this question do you want to just sell for once or do because there is no art in selling for one time there is no art in this yeah there's yeah. no art the art lies in selling several times to the same person, to the same company, uh, the companies I've been telling you about, I, you know, I'm so grateful. I must be doing something wrong because we must be doing something wrong because they still continue working with us. Mm -hmm. It's been years. They still continue working with us. Sometimes I think, you know, when, when the crisis has hit, I really don't think they needed me, but they wanted to support me. So they bought some, you know, webinars or something. So, <laughs> so that's how it works. You know, it's an interesting conversation because previously I was interviewing the business expert and I was referring to upcoming interview with you from his interview, which is really interesting. And now I'm going to refer in that interview <laughs> with your That's interview because cool. it's always cool to have bridges. There's yeah. so much connection and he's a business expert, right? So we were talking about the customer retention and how much it cost for you to convert one customer. That was exactly conversation which we're going into right now so he said like for example your lead cost like seven dollars from ad and you sell them something for five hundred dollars so if it is one conversion that means that you need to pay seven dollars to convert somebody to this 500 and maybe one hour of your time or something like this on the discovery goal or whatever now if this person never buys from you, these are your numbers. But if you have the all customer journey and you understand how many products this customer can buy from you, then you're actually in a completely different realm and your markers, your business calculation is completely different because you're going to convert this one customer after one conversion again and again and again and again. And if they are satisfied customers, they also bring a lot more new customers towards you because they are happy customers. So you would like to share good experience and that works like magic so for marketing experience it's an amazing tool to bring new customers to brand ambassadors basically and many yeah. people mistaking brand ambassadors with when you hire a celebrity <laughs> you know so it, it, it's for, their, for it, three minutes of their time on yeah, instagram yeah it's not about that at all because when we talk about brand ambassadors it's about people who are so happy about your service that they willingly on their own sharing information about you they bragging about you with any conversations they're like yeah yeah, yeah work with that person any networking is just buzzing about your great uh, services even when you are not in the room so I'm absolutely excited about that, what you're doing, because it definitely can impact the success of your business. Yeah. So, and and it's not just when they're happy, Eve. I think mm. it's even more when they are unhappy with you. What do you do? Right. And that's right? exactly what I want to ask you about, because I had my own experience with uh, dealing with a negative feedback uh, from customers in one of our businesses, which was a very interesting experience. So what would you recommend when customers are not happy, they won't refund? And there are two types of customers. I want to have the real time example, real idea from you. So. For example, customer won't refund. For example, they don't want other services from you. They just won't refund. And they clearly stated that one conversation, another conversation, the customer won't bonus for the bad service because they messed up with the service. Another type of conversation, they are willing 
to get another expert or service replacement or something like this. So how would you deal with this three different conversation? Uh, that's actually that's actually one conversation just in different steps <laughs> <laughs> that's always one conversation with everybody just different steps so you you I even put down the steps mm -hmm. uh, usually when something goes wrong and if the client and that's very important guys if the client is not extremely unhappy with you so they just say you ask them how is did you, did you go through our class or did you go through the course or did you like your mattress? And the person says, uh, you know what, I, uh, it's okay, but I probably won't buy it once again. So see that? Um, in that case, you, um, you go deeper always. Remember authenticity? You ask them, okay, I'm so sorry I didn't meet your expectations. Could you please tell me what I could do or what was it in the course that you, you know, that wasn't helpful. Well, it was helpful, but I'm just starting my business. So this is, a da, 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 or, I'm, I, I, or I'm switching from corporate, you know, their own reasons, right? So in this case, you feel it's a light unsatisfaction, let's call it this way. And um, I usually, what we do, we, we recommend to say, and then the person could say, guys, I don't need a refund anything. I just want to tell you, you asked and I'm telling you, this is not a 100% hit, right? So here, what you do, you could say, thank you for sharing that with us. And I'm so sorry for this. Um, can I can I suggest you this little bonus just, just to make things better between us, okay? Um, so this could be the bonus. Now, um, replacement is usually a step number two. Okay, so a client is more unhappy. <laughs> I know there is not a happy, unhappy meter, but you could feel it if you work with clients for a long time. Um, you, you could say, okay, so this wasn't a good course. Can I do a replacement for you? Because I feel like you, you completely, you know, this course was was was, was for corporations and you're an entrepreneur and I, I'm so sorry I didn't figure it in the beginning and can I replace that course for for for, for the one that you need? That's a replacement. Um, refund is usually the last step because if people buy from you guys, they don't they don't need a refund. They need the product. Mm -hmm. That's why they bought it from you. Mm -hmm. So thinking that a refund is always the best choice, no, it isn't. And I was sharing you an example with you today from Wayfair when I ordered a mattress. Guys, a mattress is something that you either have or you don't have. You either sleep or you don't sleep on, right? It's black or white. <laughs> Mm -hmm. so and the, the and yeah and so they the, the, to cut the story short they didn't deliver deliver the mattress on time their fault because it did there was a promise over there they didn't deliver on time and they immediately suggested a refund mm -hmm. i don't need a refund i need a mattress right so think mm -hmm. about that analogy all the time when people buy from you they need the product not the refund so a refund is usually the third step when you suggest, I see that this, you know, this didn't fulfill your needs or whatever, would you be okay if we did a refund for you? And if the person still needs a mattress and we will still look for, we will suggest other mattresses that could be delivered today. And mattress is a metaphor here, guys. Of course, whatever that could, could, could answer your 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 needs. And, um, and plus, mm -hmm. there's always a plus over there and plus, can we suggest this little bonus, free delivery, whatever, so that, you know, to cover the inconvenience? Mm -hmm. Always remember that when you have a unsatisfied client, a replacement, a refund is, yeah, you will solve the issue, but you will not solve the relationships. That's very different level. Mm -hmm. So every time you solve an issue with a client, ask yourself, okay, issue solved but is the relationship solved is the relationship back to what we had before because if the relationship isn't back you're not gonna order from them no so you will just be giving out refunds mm -hmm. and expecting them to come back but they won't because the relationship isn't back see that's mm -hmm. a very subtle moment but don't forget about it and I think it's not only the subtle moment, it also can have a very negative publicity because the statistically people are more tempted to share negative experience than the positive experience. And we were talking about this in our last conversation uh, when I said the top CV company just stolen my money. 
They yeah. didn't write any CV. And I mean, the CV was 50% of the rarely used words in English. It was pretty much not not written in English. It was written by one Asian copywriter. And I asked uh, for British copywriter initially. Yeah. So that was actually the request not met. And then I had the dispute with them, which I apparently lost because they played me with PayPal and things like this. They answered later. So I neither got the fund, I neither got the CV, and they were asking me, like, we can give you a different service. But I understand that the, on the level of the company, when I ask the British copywriter and I receive a person who doesn't know English, I don't want the service from them. I just want yeah. my money back because I can. In this case, income. yes. They're completely incompetent. They show it like that. And this is top CV frauds. So, and I'm speaking about this publicly everywhere. Now, will that harm the company? I hope they will close. I hope they will never fraud anybody else because that's a good thing to tell some somebody to not buy from the companies who are apparently frauds. But you never need to be as a company in the position when your clients speak about you so negatively. So refund, if your customer asks for refund, obviously have a conversation with them, but give them refund if they ask. Yes, I think that's true. that must be a rule. Yeah, exactly. You don't negotiate like, oh, maybe you want a coupon. No, not in this case. Yeah. If they're bluntly asking for a refund, yes. Mm -hmm. You don't try to, oh, you know, maybe we can give you a bonus. No, 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 you're very right. That's a very... Fair comment, yeah. Yeah, because it was very interesting situation because I personally dealt with this. And many times, like in a restaurant businesses, for example, we can replace one meal with a better yeah, meal or more expensive true. meal. Because as you say, like you just need a mattress or you just need a food. So it's like absolutely logical. But many times when you see that company just not able to deliver. Exactly. You just want to money back. There, is, yeah. there should be never, ever any discussion about the refunds because mm. people, if they see that you are not a good match, then it's a problem on your conversion. So now we back to the initial part when we don't deliver the service right, we need to have this metrics, how we convert our customers, what is our process on onboarding customers so that we have this unsatisfied customer. So probably with this refund, and I think it's an interesting strategy because we used it a few times, with this refund, we also ask them, so why did they come to us? What was the process? What was our mistake from their perspective? Now, exactly. if they get their money, they sometimes very open to discuss this experience because they feel safe and comfortable. And in fact, this is a few times was the way to win customers back because they got their money. They're absolutely comfortable with us and they see our genuine interest about where you mess up, we want to fix it, <laughs> you know, how to help you, because yeah. we really, really care. If you care. Yeah. I always that's the thing. Customers. Yeah, that's and... the thing. That's the thing. Businesses, um, the bigger business becomes, the less they care about clients because they yeah. think numbers. So they think, okay, so last month we had 0 0.00002 refunds. What is that in the, you know, in the whole business? nothing that's a very linear thinking because you forget about publicity now yeah you forget about publicity now and it's not just about being nice to your clients you forget about publicity and um you, you, we all have you can, you can go ahead and google how many clients potential clients you lose when you have the negative feedback and mm -hmm. it's all very well very very common numbers because if eve posts this or i use this company in all the business talks and I do teach at the business school, mm -hmm. right? And it's not, you probably, you probably think, oh, that's a revenge. That's not a revenge, guys. Not it's, it's you, you, what you're doing, you, you want your friends, your students, you, you want to protect them from bad brands. That, that's, you want to say, you know, guys, if you are going to work with, if you're going to buy with Wafer, you still could, that's your choice. But, mm -hmm. but just know that if they mess up the delivery, they will never say sorry. They will never do anything. Yeah. You will just sit there and write it. That's okay for you, please. And then the person chooses. That's fine. They all Absolutely. choose for themselves. 
And we were discussing with you this uh, last time. We also discussed that very interesting point, which we totally get together on it. Like everybody reading their uh, negative comments first on Amazon. Yes, everybody does that. It's we all like read the, the point of attention. And when I choose something, I'm like, okay, am I okay with this negative comments? Because sometimes like, oh my God, color didn't suit my hair. I'm like, okay, I have different type of hair. Exactly. <laughs> it's probably will see it. Exactly. But if they say like, okay, it was very nice product, but it was like, you know, stop working after two days of usage, I will think twice if I want to buy it or not. So yeah, negative feedback is a huge part of the business. And we, I think as business is not supposed to think about this as a negative feedback, but we need to think about this, the way how to improve our services. Right. Yeah, and, and the, there's also a book that says that you, if you think it's just one client not being satisfied with you, usually this is just a representative of all your clients who are not satisfied, but just, you know, that little hero who had the guts <laughs> to write mm-hmm. you about that, uh, the guts or time. Usually exactly. people don't have time. You know, a vending machine just now uh, took eight eight uh, pounds from me. I wanted to buy water three times and it just it wouldn't give me water. Mm-hmm. and I was I was super thirsty so mm-hmm. I really needed that water <laughs> so three times I tried to you know four times and then it, mm-hmm. it has eaten up my eight pounds and there it says if this machine isn't working something happened please email to us to the refunds at blah blah right mm-hmm. which I did because again I don't want people to go there and this is this is a cash machine just the other way around <laughs> it doesn't give you cash it takes exactly. cash right and I did that and uh, nothing, just just automated templates yeah, oh being God. sent to me. I actually, you know, I have a whole list of companies I can I can go ahead. What's the name of that little little business issue court in, mm-hmm. in the UK? I have a whole list now. But the thing is, I don't understand why, why, why treat people like this? That's, you know, that's that's why I got into this thing in, in the first yeah. place. My biggest dream, my biggest mission is to change the way companies treat their employees and clients. That's my biggest, that's a worldwide mission. I don't, I just, you know, humanly wise, I don't get this. Yeah. Uh, business wise, I don't get this because we, we had a conversation with you and I told mm-hmm. you that I don't spend any money on my marketing, none, zero. Mm-hmm. I do spend my time on social media and stuff, but I don't spend money. All the clients are either referred clients or, um, mm-hmm. like you said, or the ones that are existing and buying more. So even business-wise, I don't get it. That's very interesting because psychologically, what we're discussing here is really customer psychology, is how customers perceive your business, how how much they're willing to recommend you if you show that you care. And I'm doing just a little recap of our conversation because I think it's a very valuable idea for any business to understand what's going on in the customer's head. And just like you mentioned about this vending machine or that CV writing company, so this mattress company, it is not about revenge. It is not about the emotions. It's not about, like you said, you, you're talking about uh, how people treating the employees. So like uh, we were discussing the recruitment process and when people send in this idiotic email, when they say it like, you know, oh, you were so, we receiving so many amazing applicants and you are not that good. You are not successful. We decided not process with you, but they pretty much say we are too good to be true and you are really nothing. Yeah. And it's just a little wording which can change the game completely when they feel, when they empathize that you actually care to send them application can change the world for people people who apply because it's not rejection which we deal with it's a humiliation and this is very small and subtle change which can make a lot of people happier right yeah so and influence your brand and have a different emotions connected with your brand exactly because employees also working with that exactly so having this all in mind and i admire our conversation because i think we just just hit so many important points and they're incredibly peaceful because when people think about customer care, I think that many businesses, and, and tell me if you feel the same, many businesses feel extremely defensive mm. 
yeah. when they talk about this because they think about refund, uh, negative feedback they think about they have to give money back they think that customers will share some revengeful kind of post or something like this companies literally are afraid of this and feel yeah. defensive and instead it can be changed like so quickly when it's just handled properly right it, yeah it's hard though Eve, especially for those of your coaches coaches yeah. experts consultants entrepreneurs when we get a negative uh we usually don't have those negative reviews posted on, on online yeah. it's usually you would hear from another client of yours that that client was not super satisfied right mm -hmm. and we immediately get defensive because that's our own reputation. That's our baby that we, are create, we have created. That's, you know, I don't know, in my case, hundreds of dollars invested into my education so that I'm able to provide this to my clients. Um, so from a human standpoint, I get this, we get defensive. Yeah. Now, the question is, are you going to handle this? Because if you are going to handle this with the client, you either need a break yeah. And a glass of champagne to calm yourself down and then take all those emotions out. Or you can have someone else on your team mm -hmm. who doesn't have those emotions connected with the um, reputation and everything. So think about that. You could have somebody else on your team because they don't, they're not emotionally so much attached. Yeah. And also, like, you know, I had this conversation with many coaches when clients often don't want to upset coaches in this situation because coaching industry is slightly different it's much more narrow it's not a corporate exactly. so everybody exactly. know each other and we had conversations with ex-clients from coaches who were like did you get results from this coach i'm like no and yeah, me either and i had a conversation with that person and she didn't get any results either but yeah she's actually a good person you know so they don't ask refund they had lovely conversations but that was a very interesting revelation because i'm very obsessed with customer feedback all the time mine or somebody else always <laughs> taking everything in consideration in this case this coach actually could promote her services as networking because everybody valued networking there instead oh, of providing her services which apparently don't work oh okay and people so... would pay the same amount of money oh. <laughs> just a different question just of how she promotes the service mm -hmm. and That's it was interesting. everybody would be satisfied simple solution if anybody would actually tell her this in yeah. face nobody dared to do this because everybody had the fear to hurt her feelings because she's apparently a very good person and everybody so good person and people so value this networking that they were willing to throw money to her so <laughs> it's a very <laughs> strange dilemma right so. yeah it is I, yeah that's why i said that was coaches it's not so everything is yeah. super subtle they don't post about yeah. about us on, on social media yeah exactly so what are your three best tips from your expertise to our viewers okay tip number one never forget your existing clients or the clients that used to buy from you before Make it a strategy, you know, just put down on your calendar, on your outlook that if you had a conversation uh, with the client and you sold to them in a month, you know, put yourself in a reminder to, to, to contact them, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, which is very interesting, and, and I, uh, I, yeah, I don't want you to think that I teach superficial stuff because it might sound like this right now, but, <laughs> but um, people like gifts. Mm -hmm. And we sometimes forget about this, that a gift is, a, is an emotional connection. And if you are all digital coach who does, who does everything virtual and you don't have you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation, I mean, face-to-face -face conversations, then, um, then in your case, physical gifts uh, would be off, off the roof. Why? Because, um, because number one, it's a gift. Number two, it, it shows some connection physically with you as a brand, right? And um, so just little, little tips. And number three, um, try to look at your process of communication with your clients. Try to look at it from the perspective of 
you know, step back and don't ask yourself, what am I doing right on this stage? That's a wrong question. <laughs> ask yourself, how does that stage of our interaction look to the client? How does it look to them? Uh, like, for example, we are talking to you on Zoom, with you on Zoom right now. Mm-hmm. And when I thought about this, people, when they step in into my Zoom, did you know there is a way to change that template over there? Mm-hmm. So when, when you're waiting in the waiting room, it says, in my case, it says, hey, we are so excited to see you. We are going to start shortly. And that's such a little thing. I didn't think much of it. I just looked at the whole process of communication with the clients. Everybody compliments me on it. They say, oh, that was such an interesting message, which I think it wasn't good enough because I would love for it to be personalized and say, say, hey, Eve, but I don't know how to teach that machine to do that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, so that that to give you some system, you know, mm-hmm. look at your process of communication with your clients and, and yeah, try to become very humble at that point <laughs> and ask yourself, what is, what is, how does that feel and look to them? Maybe more feel than look, okay? Because we're mm-hmm. human beings, we're deli- we directed by our, by our feelings, okay? Mm-hmm. So, I absolutely love this perspective to look from your client perspective and not in the defensive way, in a very human way. This is like, again, to summarize what we were talking about, because in coaching world specifically, and the course creators world specifically, there is a tendency of create huge launches when people can't handle the amount of people they got, and then they just don't serve properly so they have like the very shiny campaign and then like you know by the end when people on board on this course or something they see little to no care especially if it is diy especially if somebody forgot to mention additional costs like when they teach and launch the business for example they forgot that the hosting will cost money site creation will cost money advertising will cost money and then you spend five thousand dollars and they're like yeah this is another additional five thousand dollars you need to spend to just like this service to work and people like oh <laughs> oops yeah. So but now I, I completely agree. I'm afraid of big launches. I'm afraid of big groups, unless there is a partner who is responsible yeah. for those people. I personally would not, because mm-hmm. you're right. I'd, I'd rather have smaller groups, higher prices, smaller groups, but then I'm sure I could spend that time. Um, yeah, I'm not volume based. Some people are, and I see that. But then you have to make you know, extraordinary, sure, that everybody is cared for and not just receives um, marketing messages, because that is not care. And that's a very interesting thing where I want to really wrap in with talking, uh, wrap off, (laughs) how to say this in English. So uh, when we talk about, yeah, to wrap it up, correct. (laughs) So basically to talk about this care, and I think it was a most prominent topic in our conversation that when we genuinely, authentically show up for our client and care about them, and they, they can see that it's not just words, just that sensation that you actually genuinely care it can change the world for both of you make you less defensive clients happier then they'll bring they will bring friends to your business and then you all will think kumbaya right yeah Yeah. (laughs) so i love this conversation i think it's incredibly valuable thank you so much for this how people can connect with you because i know that you have several retreats several interesting seminars and learning ideas and programs you will describe them a little bit better and how people can uh, get to these programs how people can connect with you thank you yeah so uh, just recently we have started doing um programs in um, European cities like London, Paris, and Milan. And so these are upcoming and they, they're they a bit different. Like in Paris, for example, we will just meet for a day of, um, I call it client service school, meaning where we learn how to serve our clients better, right? Mm-hmm. So that, you know, everything that you said, mm-hmm. they refer us and love us and, and come back. And then in in Milan, we have um, something called service retreat, 
that's, um, you know, three days was culture, was La Scala theater, was, um, uh, yeah, so a bit more time where we not just learn, but also um, mm -hmm. interact with each other and support each other. That's important as well. So yeah, LinkedIn, I'd say is the best. Of mm -hmm. course, there is Instagram, everything, but LinkedIn is, um, yeah, is probably the best. I'll put all the links into the description and you will see them somewhere on the screen once I will put this. Absolutely connect with Anastasia because she's amazing and I know that she's expert with so much detailed approach. She understands customer psychology so, psychology, so she definitely can help your business to thrive, spend less money on marketing so that you can get more from your existing customers and actually scale your business in a way more efficient way. <laughs> Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much.